What's up guys, my name is Jake and welcome to Cancelled, episode number 8. This is the show where we look into everything and anything that was eventually cancelled. This episode is brought to you by Audible. Use my link audible.com slash bsf or text bsf to 500 500 to get a free book plus two Audible originals and a 30 day trial. I remember, and this is very random, but going camping with just me and my dad down to Watkins Glen, New York. It was always such a fun time, but one particular memory I had every year we went was going to the Walmart there and playing the Xbox 360 demo for a game called Split Second. Later on, I finally got the game for myself, and it became, and still is, some of the most fun I've ever had playing video games with people. But with its cliffhanger ending, I had always wondered when the second installation of the game series was going to happen. So today I wanted to take a closer look at the second intended game for the series that never happened, and why Disney, yes that's right Disney, ultimately cancelled Split Second 2. I would like to warn everyone, if you intend to play this game, this video will contain spoilers. So Split Second was a game developed by BlackRock Studios, a small indie developer owned by Disney Interactive. Split Second was set to be their second game for the studio after their 2008 ATV release, Pure. However, this game, which had some similarities to other racing titles like Burnout, had really set to breathe new life into the racing game genre. In June of 2009, the game was revealed to the world at E3. The response was generally quite excited for this new and innovative entry into the racing genre. IGN was quoted saying, Although the level shown was only an extra little glimpse of what Split Second has to offer, already it's looking great. The combination of Burnout-style thrills and pin-sharp presentation is certainly an explosive mix. And if Split Second can deliver on these promises when it's released next year, we'll be first in line to climb inside the driver's seat. On May 18th, 2010, Split Second released to the public on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and eventually PC. The game, just out of release, was very well received critically, yet didn't do so well with sales, moving only 86,000 units for both platforms in the first 12 days. The initial release was thought to have been severely hit by the release of Red Dead Redemption, which came out the same day, and in the same amount of time, sold 1.5 million units. This cast a huge shadow over Split Second, and since then, sales were rather slow. However, this didn't reflect on the game's actual public perception, since it quickly grew praise for just how unique it presented itself. Most game reviewers who played it left pretty favorable reviews, giving Split Second an 82% on Metacritic. The game itself though was pretty unique on how it worked from a gameplay perspective. Split Second focused on the fun, exciting, and action-packed side of the genre, marketing itself as an arcade racer. The story takes place within a fictional game show called Split Second, where contestants would battle each other on a set designed to be destroyed. As you race around various themed tracks, three bars would fill up after drifting and drafting behind opponents. Once a bar would fill up, you would be able to do a power play, which would activate the corresponding destruction event to where you are and who you're trying to eliminate. If you have all three bars filled up, you have the choice to completely change the map and open up shortcuts, which fundamentally changed how the map plays. This all culminated in a chaotic and intense battle for first place. As you win more races and work your way up with increasingly difficult opponents, you unlock more vehicles and move on to new episodes of the show. In addition to the main campaign, Split Second also featured other game modes, most notably Survival, where you have to dodge barrels from a huge truck, Air Revenge, where you evade and battle attack choppers, and one of the most intense being Eliminator, where every few seconds the person in last place is blown up. This overall made Split Second a standout game from other racers at the time. Its main purpose was to make the most intense and exciting racing title, but also have a destructible world where a single choice could turn around the whole game. It was a competitive and chaotic mess, which players loved. The ending of the main story, however, left some pretty big assumptions to the future of the game. Great season, crew. It's a wrap. Wait a minute. Hey, how are those power plays getting set off? We deactivated them after the final race. Who are these guys? The set's supposed to be clear by now. It wasn't supposed to be torn down yet. What's going on? Oh no, not them, but, but 
They got taken off Air 82. Man, he said they'd be back, but oh boy, this ain't gonna end well. The somewhat cringy final cutscene ends with the text to be continued, claiming the story will continue into another installation of the intended series. While Split Second did introduce a few DLC packs in the next few months through 2010, the game was clearly not selling like Disney had hoped. By October, the game was being sold at Best Buy for just $20 a copy, which, within the first year of a game's release, this had a telling sign of how poorly Split Second was doing. But as the last cutscene suggested, BlackRock Studios were fully intending to begin work on the second game. However, over on the corporate side of things, Disney Interactive Studios was not doing very well. The company had lost over $200 million a year between 2008 and 2012. The struggling video game subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company needed to make big changes to regain profitability. Since the time Split Second went into development all the way to early 2011, the publisher had lost more than $800 million. So after a change in management, Disney Interactive Studios came out and basically said producing games for consoles wasn't working for them, and they would be focusing more on mobile games as a whole. With Split Second 2 already in development, the announcement had a scary conclusion for Black Rock. By December of 2010, Split Second 2, as early as it might have been in development, had been officially cancelled. And in early 2011, over 200 employees at the studio had been laid off, leaving just 40 developers left at BlackRock Studios. However, by mid-2011, with Split Second 2 already cancelled and no other project screenlit, Disney confirmed they would be closing BlackRock Studios permanently. This was during a string of closures by the parent company, in an effort to move away from console-based platforms and to eliminate their yearly losses. Employees within BlackRock had reportedly claimed that the writing was on the wall the second Disney had switched directions. Basically, anything they had pitched the company never had a chance of being greenlit. And there are two sides to that. Of course, it's terrible to have to lay off over 300 employees of a single developer. Disney had only taken ownership of the indie studio for just five years, and produced only two games. Disney Interactive also kind of harmed the performance of Split Second by the low amount of marketing they did for it. However, on the other end, the publisher was losing an incomprehensible amount of money year over year, allowing their studios to make some pretty great games, however, at a cost. One that apparently wasn't sustainable for even Disney. The CEO was tasked to turn the company around, and that's the way they chose. So really, Split Second 2 never had a chance. It was cancelled within the same year as the original game came out, so I can't imagine they were very far in the development process. And because of that, not much or really anything is known about the second title. Though, one piece of concept art has surfaced on the internet, from game artist John Liberto, which shows the game show Split Second from the 1970s or 80s in a similarly explosive racetrack. But really, that's all there is. And for me personally, that's a huge shame. The developers of the original Split Second had went on to create their own new studio, but it's now almost certain that we'll never see a conclusion to the original story. Honestly though, I don't really think anyone cared about the actual story of the game, rather than the incredible gameplay it brought to us. To me, I think Split Second could have been a great series of games, and I truly believe the developers were capable of improving even more on the first, which really got me excited for the sequel when I first played it. But only did I know it would never happen. Split Second really was a special game for me. It was around when I got really into video games, and came out in a year to what I consider the best time for Xbox 360 games. I'll always remember the enormous amount of fun I had playing it, even it being one of the original videos I made on this channel. But after playing through the entire game, I was always curious on when the next Split Second was coming out, and how the studio would continue the game. And now, looking further into it, the story is pretty sad, all culminating in a promised game that was ultimately cancelled.
One of my favorite games from 2010 besides Split Second was Halo Reach. It had such a great storyline to it, and I always meant to dive a little deeper into the lore. A great place to do that, however, is with Audible. There you can listen to Halo The Fall of Reach, which is what I'm doing right now, but you also have access to the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, so there's always something to listen to. And now, an Audible membership has even more perks. Members will now get three titles of their choice, one audiobook, two Audible originals every month, as well as exclusive access to fitness programs, and even more. Audible has actually been a great service for me since I always listen to something while I edit, and now I'm able to listen to audiobooks in the background, which is just perfect for me. Try it free for 30 days by visiting audible.com bsf or texting bsf to 500-500. Anyway, this episode was always something I wanted to explore further, since Split Second really was an important game to me. Seriously, I implore you to play this. I'm not sure how you can now, but find a way, it's definitely worth it. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and thank you very much for watching.